The endocrine system is in charge of how we respond to anything that happens in our environment, which means things can get really complicated when you're studying this system for the MCAT. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the endocrine system, including major types of hormones, the organs that are involved in endocrine signaling, and the major pathways that you'll need to know for testing. To preface, the MCAT is not going to test you on high-level endocrinology or physiology related to these concepts. Instead, you'll see questions from basic biology classes, so that's going to be the focus of this video. Let's start with hormones, which are the chemical signals that allow us to respond to our environment. There are two major types of hormones that you're going to see on the MCAT, peptide hormones and steroid hormones. Peptide hormones are derived from proteins and amino acids, and they're usually bigger and tend to be polar or charged, at least on the outer surfaces. Steroid hormones, by contrast, are made from lipids, specifically cholesterol, and they're very small and nonpolar. These characteristics are important because they define how these hormones cause the cell to respond to signals. So peptide hormones, because they're big and tend to be polar or charged, that means they can't cross through cell membranes. So they're going to bind to receptors on the cell surface. That binding to the receptor is going to initiate what's called a second messenger signaling cascade, which allows the cell to respond in different ways to that peptide hormone. The steroid hormone, on the other hand, is small and nonpolar. Anything cholesterol derived is usually small enough and nonpolar enough to diffuse passively through a cell membrane. So that steroid hormone is going to go straight into the cell where it will find its receptor in the cytosol. It will bind to its receptor and then usually travel to the nucleus where it will impact gene expression, the production of proteins, by acting as a transcription factor to either upregulate or downregulate more protein synthesis. As we go through the different pathways, I'll point out which hormones are steroid hormones or peptide hormones so you can understand their signaling mechanism when they reach their target cells. Next up, let's review the major organs that are involved in endocrine signaling and pathways. Now, many, if not most of our organs in our bodies do have some endocrine function. They respond to or produce signals that allow us to respond to our environment. In this video, we're really going to focus on the major endocrine organs that have very big and important impacts on our signaling pathways throughout our bodies. Let's start at the top with the hypothalamus, which is located in the diacephalon of the brain. The hypothalamus receives signals from the body and will then transmit those signals via hormones to further endocrine organs to respond to that environmental signal. I like to think of the hypothalamus as the relay system or the starting place where it takes in information from the environment and from our bodies and then will signal other organs in our pathways to respond accordingly. The next stop for most hypothalamic signals is the pituitary, which is located just below the hypothalamus. The pituitary gland is often called the master gland because it has major endocrine functions. In fact, over nine endocrine hormones are produced in the posterior and anterior pituitary. So we're going to spend a lot of time in this organ. Below that, in our neck, is the thyroid and parathyroid glands. The thyroid gland wraps around our neck and the parathyroid glands are four small nodular glands embedded into the thyroid itself. Continuing down the body, we have our pancreas, which is connected to the endocrine system by regulating blood glucose levels through insulin and glucagon. Continuing downwards, we have our adrenal gland, adrenal, renal meaning kidney, a uh, meaning above, so this adrenal gland sits right on top of the kidney. And finally, we have our gonads, which are male or female specific and are involved with regulating and producing our sex hormones. Okay, we've now identified the major endocrine organs and where they exist in the body, which is highly testable on the MCAT. Now we're going to walk through the pathways, also known as the axes, of endocrine regulation and production, starting from the hypothalamus. So we're going to zoom in on each part of the pathway and talk through the hormones that are produced and how the signals cascade down through the body. Let's start by zooming in on the hypothalamus. So I mentioned that the hypothalamus regulates the rest of the endocrine system, often by communicating directly with the pituitary. And so now we're zooming in on the hypothalamus and the pituitary, and we can see that the pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus in two different ways. The hypothalamus is connected to the posterior pituitary via neurons. So the hormones that are produced from the posterior pituitary are actually produced in the hypothalamus and just sent down for storage 
in the posterior pituitary before they're sent out. The two hormones that are produced by the posterior pituitary are oxytocin and ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, which was previously known as vasopressin. So these two hormones are produced and then ADH, as we talked about in our kidney video, helps to regulate blood volume with the kidney and oxytocin helps produce feelings of euphoria and helps with labor in women. Both oxytocin and ADH are peptide hormones. So they're fast acting, fast producing hormones that bind to cell surface receptors and initiate a second messenger cascade. So posterior pituitary, relatively straightforward. Now let's talk about the anterior pituitary, which is a little different. The anterior pituitary is connected to the hypothalamus via a portal system. Portals are small blood vessel systems that connect two organs. They don't go into the entire circulation, they just stay between two organs. This portal system is called the hypophyseal seal portal system and connects the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. As a result, if the hypothalamus wants to activate or change anything about the anterior pituitary, it's going to need to send a hormone through our HPS system. The hypothalamus does this with three major target organs in mind. So we're gonna walk through each of those and these are each called axes. We're gonna start with the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. All right, so the HPA axis, we're gonna start at the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces a hormone called CRF, corticotropin releasing factor. That CRF, which is produced in the hypothalamus, then travels down the hypophyseal portal system and binds to receptors in the anterior pituitary. ACTH is then released from the anterior pituitary into the systemic circulation where it travels all the way down to the adrenal glands, specifically the adrenal cortex. It will then stimulate the adrenal cortex to make corticosteroids. And our most common corticosteroid is cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone that helps us respond to stressors in our body and in our environment. Now, both CRF and ACTH are peptide hormones that are going to bind to cell surfaces, but cortisol is produced from cholesterol and is a steroid hormone. So its mechanism of action is going to be going directly into the cell, all the way into the nucleus and acting as a transcription factor for its target cells. All right, and that's axis one, HPA axis, where we're impacting the adrenal glands. Now, I do want to mention, these are lower yield, less likely to be tested on the MCAT, but I do just want to mention this for completion, is that in addition to ACTH, CRF also stimulates MSH, melanin stimulating hormone, which helps us release more melanin in our skin cells, and endorphins. So both of these other hormones are stimulated by corticotropin releasing factor, and they're also produced as we produce ACTH. ACTH is just the most testable one on the MCAT. Now we have the idea, we are going from the hypothalamus, we're releasing a hormone through the hypophyseal portal system, which binds to cells in the anterior pituitary, stimulating the release of our next hormone, which goes to its target organ, in this case, the adrenal glands, to then produce our final hormone, endocrine hormone, that's going to go and have body action uh, on its target organs. Let's now move to the next axis. This is going to be our HPG axis, hypothalamus pituitary to gonads. For our HPG axis, the hypothalamus is going to be releasing GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. GnRH, just like CRF, will travel through the hypophyseal portal system and bind to cells on the anterior pituitary because it's a peptide hormone and causes the cells to release LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone, and follicle stimulating hormone. We've got two hormones being produced from the action of GnRH at the anterior pituitary. LH and FSH will then both travel to the gonads, but their site of action will depend both on the sex of the person and which hormone is acting. So let's start with LH. And in LH in males, LH in males will bind to the Leydig cells. These Leydig cells produce testosterone, which is of course the major sex hormone in males. 
In females, LH acts on cells in the ovaries to stimulate estradiol production, which again is a key steroid hormone in females, and high levels of LH stimulate ovulation. In males, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, stimulates the Sertoli cells, which results in spermatogenesis or making of more sperm cells. In females, FSH stimulates the follicles of the ovaries, resulting in follicle growth. One of those follicles will eventually become the egg that will travel down the fallopian tubes. As the follicles grow, they also produce estradiol. We've now covered two of the three major pathways or axes that originate in the hypothalamus for the endocrine system. Before we tackle that last one, I'm Amanda Bram and I've been helping students on their MCAT journeys since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. And if you'd like more interactive lessons on topics like these, including study planning and preparation for test day, please check out the link in the caption below for our next available MCAT course. Okay, one more major pathway to go. This one involves the thyroid gland. So it's going to be our HPT axis or hypothalamic pituitary thyroid. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. The hypothalamus is going to be releasing TRH or thyrotropin releasing hormone. It's again that TRH, just like CRF and GNRH, going to travel through the hypophyseal portal system to the anterior pituitary where it's going to stimulate the cells of the anterior pituitary to release TSH. Again, both of these are peptide hormones that are binding to cell surfaces. That TSH is going to travel again all the way, this time not that far, to the thyroid gland where it's going to stimulate the production and release of the thyroid hormones known as T3 and T4. Now, T3 and T4 are a special type of hormone in terms of structure because they're very small and they're based off of tyrosine, which is an amino acid. But because they're so small, they don't just bind to the surface receptors, they actually have a transporter that helps them cross a membrane and allows them to take action within a cell, kind of like a steroid hormone, but they can't freely diffuse through like a steroid hormone would. So just so you know, they're kind of a special class. They're amino acid hormones as opposed to full peptide hormones. T3 and T4 have a lot of major actions throughout the body because they help regulate and maintain our basal metabolic rate, our metabolism, and they're in charge of helping growth and development of different organ systems. So they help maintain energy and stimulate growth. So they have a variety of actions depending on the cells they're interacting with, uh, but they work throughout the body. So let's take a big picture look here for a second. I know a lot of books or resources will have you just memorize the hormones that are produced by each organ. I personally find it easier to visualize it like this, where we're actually following the pathway, following the mechanism of action and seeing how one hormone can stimulate the release of another hormone as it goes through its axes. So personally, I find this an easier way to digest the different hormones of the endocrine system. Rather than go by organ, I go by pathway. Before we wrap up, there are a few more hormones that we have missed in these systems that I want to make sure you have for testing. The anterior pituitary, in addition to producing ACTH, LH, FSH, and TSH, which by the way, there's a fun acronym FLAT, F-L-A-T, allows you to remember those four hormones that are released by the anterior pituitary. In addition to that, we also have growth hormone, GH, which helps stimulate the linear growth of your body. So it'll help elongate bones, for example. So growth hormone is very important in developing organisms. That's also produced from the anterior pituitary and acts on many, many organs of the body, particularly our musculoskeletal system. The other major hormone that's produced by the anterior pituitary is prolactin, which stimulates breast tissue and promotes milk production in females. Finally, let's talk briefly about the pancreas. I'm going to cover the pancreas in more detail in another video as we talk about the regulation of metabolism, but I do want to mention that the hypothalamus does regulate the pancreas, it just does it via neuronal signaling. Neuronal signaling or electrical signaling, neurons, as opposed to hormonal or chemical signaling. So that neuronal connection to the pancreas will regulate insulin 
and glucagon production, which helps to regulate our blood glucose. When we have high blood glucose, blood glucose, we're going to stimulate insulin production, which helps bring that glucose into our cells for use for energy. When we have low blood glucose, we're going to have more glucagon, which signals the body to produce more glucose in other ways, such as breaking down glycogen or doing gluconeogenesis. Again, that will be covered in another video where we connect our endocrine system to metabolism. As a little additional trivia, glucagon is produced from the alpha cells of the pancreas and insulin is produced from the beta cells of the pancreas and both of them are peptide hormones. All right, that was a very big picture overview of the major types of hormones, the organs involved in the endocrine system and the key pathways that originate from the hypothalamus. I hope you found this video helpful. If it was, please feel free as always to share it with your pre-med community so that we can all help and encourage each other towards our goals. Happy studying and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.